Clooney massed his forces in the roadside ditch opposite Redwall Abbey. He stood well back in the meadow behind the ditch, surrounded by his captains. Here, where he was out of range, he could direct the entire operation. But at the moment, he was not having things all his own way. For a start, he did not have many archers. Rats are notoriously bad at bow making and the fletching of arrows. From the ramparts of Redwall, the field and harvest mice sent down volley after volley of tiny arrows, which, while they had no great killing power, were causing much wounding and discomfort in the ranks of Clooney's horde. Standing behind his banner, which was rammed into the earth, Clooney cracked his tail. Redtooth, Darkclaw, tell the sling throwers to stand ready. When I give the signal, I want to see a good heavy barrage of stones hitting the top of that parapet. That'll make them keep their heads down. Frogblood, Scumnose, you two will organize the gangs with the scaling ladders and grappling hooks. See, they all get up on the top of that wall and no blunders. The rat captains marched off to the ditch to make ready. Clooney held his tail up to give the signal. On top of the wall, the mouse archers kept up their relentless hail of arrows into the ditch. Constance strode up and down, holding a heavy cudgel in her paws as she urged them on. That's the stuff to give them. Mice, keep those bows twanging. Knowing the supply of arrows was not endless, the badger looked to the heaps of rubble and stone along the parapet edges. Brother Rufus, formal, be ready to shift that lot overboard at a moment's notice. Smack, clang, bang, thud. A hail of sharp stones and pebbles whizzed upwards, rattling against the masonry as Clooney waved his tail in the meadow below. Taken unawares, several mice were felled and a mole lay stunned. Get your heads down, everyone, lie flat, Constance shouted. The defenders instantly obeyed as the showers of missiles increased. Running along the ramparts, bent double, the abbot cried out. Stretcher bearers, over here, help me to get the casualties down into the cloisters. Winifred the Otter lay alongside Constance and whispered to her, Hear that scraping? Clooney's lot are putting something against the walls. It's my guess they'll be trying to climb up while we've got to lie low. Even as Winifred spoke, two grappling hooks with climbing ropes attached came clanging over the parapet and lodged in the joints. Stay low, my friends, whispered Constance. Give them a bit of time to get off the ground. I want plenty of rats to be high up before we make a move. Pass the word along. Below in the meadow, Redtooth waved his cutlass and laughed wildly. Your plan is working out, chief. Look, there's old Fangburn and his gang nearly at the top of the wall. Clooney lifted his visor to get a better view. It was too late to call out against what he saw happen next. A veritable avalanche of earth and rocks cascaded over the parapet. It smashed straight onto the main ladder. Rats screamed aloud and gasped at midair as they were swept from the ladder to the road below. The ladder fell sideways, cannoning into another one that had been set up beside it. As both ladders fell, there were scenes of mass chaos. Badly wounded and shocked, the survivors on the roadway tried to crawl back to the safety of the ditch, only to be buried beneath rubble which thundered down on them. Many lay trapped beneath the heavy ladders that had fallen. The air resounded with screams and moans. Clooney ranted and swore, leaving his standard. He rushed across the meadow, taking the ditch in a single leap. He darted across the road. Grasping a hanging rope, he began hauling himself up, claw over claw. As the solitary beaver gnawed through the last strands, the rope parted. Clooney fell from a fair height and sprawled on the dusty road in an undignified heap. Clooney flung himself into the ditch, regrouping the sling throwers and a few archers. He ordered them to await his command. At the top of the walls, the last climbing rope had been severed. A hearty cheer rent the air as the Redwall defenders broke cover to survey their handiwork. Fire! 
Clooney roared. Stones and arrows sped upwards with devastating effect. Several mice and woodlanders cried out and fell. The results heartened Clooney. All was not lost. He began devising a new plan. In Mossflower Wood, Ragir was struggling with the rope that bound him to the oak tree. He could hear far-off sounds, which meant only one thing. His chief was attacking the abbey. Straining his neck downwards at an uncomfortable angle, Ragir was able to get his teeth into the tough climbing rope. If he could manage to free himself, he might be able to sneak back and join the horde. He could mingle with them and deny that he had ever been missing. Clooney might also take a lenient view of his desertion if he could distinguish himself during the battle. The rope tasted foul. Ragir could tell by its scent that it had once belonged to Shadow. He'd never liked that surly poker-faced rodent. Ragir congratulated himself as his teeth bit through another strand. Ha! Take that rope and that! No rope can keep Ragir prisoner for long. He 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 he! Poor old Shadow, if only you could see your lovely rope now. Ragir straightened up for a moment to ease his neck. His laughter died on his lips. A horrified gurgle bubbled from his throat. Icy claws of terror gripped his chest. Swaying hypnotically, a foot from his face was the biggest, strongest, most evil-looking adder that had ever been born. The rat was completely petrified. The breath seemed to freeze his lungs. The sinister blunt head moved in a lazy rhythm, its forked tongue flickering endlessly in and out the round, bead-like jet eyes never leaving his for an instant. Its voice was like dry leaves rustling in an autumn breeze. Asmodus, Asmodus, it hissed. So kindly of you to untie yourself, rat. Come with me, I'll show you eternity. Asmodus, Asmodus, it struck with lightning speed. All that Ragir felt was a sudden, sharp sting to the side of his neck. His limbs became flaccid, his eyesight shrouded by a dark mist. The last words Ragir ever heard on this earth were uttered in the adder's sibilant hiss. Asmodus, Asmodus. Clooney scratched the floor of the ditch with his claw. It was all there, the design for his next move. He would attack the abbey secretly from the moss flower side. It would be a surprise maneuver. A hand-picked squad led by him would carry out the mission. Dressed in Clooney's war helmet and armor, Red Tooth would stay back in the meadow. His disguise would be sufficient to fool the defenders from the distance of the high walls. The rats in the ditch were ordered to continue pressing home the attack until Clooney and his party scaled the walls from behind and fought their way across the grounds to the open abbey gates. After issuing orders to his remaining captains, Clooney accompanied by a score of assorted rats, weasels, stoats, and ferrets, crept off along the course of the ditch. They carried with them the long plank from St. Ninian's Lynchgate fence. Silently, they traveled in a northerly direction until they were out of sight of the walls. Climbing out of the ditch, they crossed the road into Mossflower Wood. Clooney sat on a fallen tree trunk and told his squad what was required of them. I'll wait here with the plank carriers. The rest of you split up and search the area for any big, high trees growing near the abbey walls. Make sure that the tree you pick is higher than the wall itself and not too difficult to climb. Got that? Right. Get going. Clooney watched them stride off into the undergrowth. His previous good mood had deserted him. He was working himself into a foul temper over the day's performance by his mighty conquering horde. Shown up by the simple tactics of woodland creatures and mice, he snorted and dug his powerful claws into the rotten tree trunk, sending beetles and woodlice scurrying as he tore out a chunk of the spongy timber. Oh, he had had them frightened at first. As a commander, he knew the power of fright, but once they had gained the upper hand, in the initial skirmish, the mice lost their fear and became bolder. 
That was when the battle had started to go against him. Granted, he had scored one or two small victories, but they were nothing to brag about. He couldn't use them as an example to put fresh heart in his troops. Clooney's only hope was that the mice would become overconfident and eventually make a mistake. It was the old waiting game. Just let them make one slip. That was all he needed. Meanwhile, he had a greater obstacle to overcome than mice. The walls. It was those same accursed walls that were ruining all his plans. Clooney tore viciously at the rotting log until great chunks of it flew through the air. If this scheme worked, he wouldn't have to worry about walls anymore. He would be inside those walls like a fox among day-old chickens. Clooney sniffed the air. His senses told him the searchers were returning. Cheese Thief and a ferret named Kilcony came crashing out of the underbrush. They were trembling and twitching. Both looked as if they had been badly scared. It was some time before Clooney could get any sense out of them. Cheese Thief spoke haltingly, glancing back fearfully over his shoulder. Uh, uh, we like, we got a bit lost, Chief. Lost? Where? Clooney snarled. Kilcony pointed a shaky claw. Over that way, you're yonder. And didn't we find a great strapping oak? Was it close to the wall? Cheese Thief shook his head. No, Chief. It was further out into the woods. Look what I found wrapped around the trunk. He held out the chewed and broken climbing rope. Clooney snatched it. This looks like Shadow's climbing rope. He's dead. What are you fools trying to tell me? Kilcony whimpered pitifully. It's Ragier, Your Honor. Clooney seized the unlucky pair and shook them soundly. Have you both gone raving mad? Do you mean to tell me you're frightened of that fool Ragier? Cheese Thief fell to his knees, sobbing. But you didn't see him, Chief. He was just lying there. His face was all swollen and his tongue was sticking out. He had gone purple. Ugh, he was all sort of bloated like. It was horrible. Kilcony bobbed his head vigorously in agreement. Aye, so it was. Didn't we see him with our very own eyes, sir? Poor old Ragier, and him going backwards all the time. Going backwards? echoed Clooney. Indeed he was, said the ferret. And your man here says to me, he says, there's something pulling Ragger along. Sure, we couldn't see what it was for all the bushes, so we pulled them to one side between us. And what did we see? Well, what did you see? barked Clooney irritably. Kilcony stopped and shuddered. He spoke incredulously, as if he were unable to believe himself. We saw the biggest snake you ever clapped your eyes on, the father of all serpents. He had poor Ragger's body by the feet and was dragging it along backwards. Clooney's one eye widened. What did this serpent do when it saw you? It let go of Ragger and looked at us, squeaked Cheese Thief. The serpent stared at us. He kept on saying, Asmodeus, Asmodeus. Clooney scratched his head with a sharp, dirty claw. Asmodeus? What's that supposed to mean? Do ye not know? Tis the dreaded name of the devil himself, sir, wailed the ferret. I know because me old mother told me so, and she always said never to look a serpent in the eye. So says to me mate here, cheese thief, says I, don't look, run for your life. And that's exactly what we did, sir. Oh, you'll never know how horrible it was. I'd rather be tied to a blazing barn than go back there. So I would. The great scale body of the... Quiet, fool, said Clooney. I think I hear the others coming back. Now straighten yourselves up and not a word to anyone about this serpent thing. Or you'll feel my serpent across your backs. Clooney's long tail waved menacingly under their noses. They took his point. A weasel called Scrag came running up. He reported smartly with great efficiency. High tree near the abbey wall, chief. Um, I think. Much higher than the wall. Lots of branches jutting out. Just the job for climbing. How far to this tree? 
Clooney asked. About ten minutes' march to the east, Scrag replied. When the rest of the party arrived back, Clooney had them form up in single file. They marched eastwards at a smart pace. The high tree did prove to be an elm, an ancient giant covered in gnarly bumps and handy branches. Clooney sized it up, exactly what he wanted, the perfect distance from the wall. He turned to his commando squad. Listen, we're going to climb this tree. When we get up high enough, I'll find a strong branch that we can bridge to the wall with the plank. If we go carefully, the mice won't suspect a thing. Before they can gather their wits about them, we'll be inside Redwall.